Can you see the screen? Thanks. All right. So let's pick up where we left off. I'm going to do a lot of linear stuff today, so this stuff's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so it says, what is the slope between these two points? All right, so there is a slope formula for this, but I think it's just as easy to do the following. If you want the slope formula, I can give it to you. But I found that if you look at, start with the Y coordinates, so that's the second ones in each pair. So if I go from negative three down to negative six. How much did I go down? Yeah, so since we're going down three, that's going to be minus three, right? And then we look at these guys. If I go from four all the way down to negative two, how much did I go down that time? Yeah, so that's going to be, since we're going down, it's going to be minus 6. So 3 over 6 is really 1 half, and then the negatives, 2 negatives, gives you a positive. So your slope is positive 1 half. Okay. So next one says, what is the rate of change? Rate of change is exactly the same as the slope. Okay. So for this guy, we go from 6 up to 10. So that's 6. Here we go from minus 4 up to 2. So that's going to be 3. And 6 divided by 3 is a slope of 2. So slope and rate of change are the same thing. Okay. That's kind of a good one to know. Okay, so the next one says find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x equals zero. Okay. So if x equals zero, that means this term just pretty much goes away, right? Because three times zero is zero. So all we're left with is minus four y equals 24. We divide both sides by a negative 4. So then y, or the y-intercept, is going to be at minus 6. Okay? So the y-intercept is when x equals 0. The x-intercept is when y equals 0. Okay? So that's a good one to know. Most of these things here, if you have just one basic piece of information, you're usually good to go. So on this page, like I said, the big takeaway is that slope and rate of change are the same thing. And again, if you want the y-intercept, make x zero. If you want the x-intercept, make y zero. That's it. Just pretty much cross them off. All right, so let's move on. says write the following equation in slope intercept form all right so slope intercept form means solve for y okay so if we solve this guy for y we've got 4x minus y equals one okay so first thing we want to do we want to move 4x to the other side because if we're solving for y we want everything that isn't y to go to the other side right so these guys will cancel so i have minus y equals minus 4x and then plus one so that's minus y we'd like plus y so you have to do is switch the signs so negative y becomes positive y negative 4x becomes positive 4x and plus one becomes minus one. 
that's your answer. Okay. Okay, so next one says, what is the slope of a line that is perpendicular to this line? Okay, so slope is always the number in front of the X. So that's the one third, right? So that's always your slope. Slope is always the number in front of X. All right. So then our original equation has a slope of one third. To figure out a perpendicular, flip the position of these two. So instead of being one third or one over three, it's going to be three over one, and then switch the sign. So this would just be negative three. So the slope of the perpendicular line is minus three. Okay. Questions on that? So like I said, this is stuff pretty early on in the year. It's, it's pretty easy, but we haven't seen it in a while. So that's why we decided to run through it today. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and check out a couple more. So it says, what is the point slope form that goes through these points? Okay. So first thing we need to do, we have points but we need a slope. So we're going to do the same thing we were doing from before. We're going to say, OK, we're going to start at 3 and go to 27. So if we go th from 3 all the way up to 27, that's 24. Right? And then here we're going to go from negative 2 up to 4. So we have to go up 2 just to get to 0 and then 4 more. So 2 and 4 is 6, so it's going to be over 6. Okay. So 24 divided by 6 means we have a slope of 4. So point slope form means that we need a point and we need a slope. Well, we've got our slope. So this is our slope. You can use either point. I'd probably use this guy. I tend to use the smaller numbers. It seems like smaller numbers, there's less chance of making a mistake. So point slope form looks like this. You take y and then you subtract off the y-coordinate. So in this case, that would be 3. And that equals the slope. And then you take times x, and then you subtract off the x-coordinate. So minus a minus 2 is plus 2. So you just switch the sign of those guys. And you just leave it like that. So when they say point slope form, it looks like that. Okay. So the next one says, write an equation in slope-intercept form that goes to the same points. So remember, slope-intercept form means solve for y. Okay, so that's this guy. Solve him for y. Okay, so... We'll rewrite it down here. So there it is in point slope form. We got y minus 3 equals 4, and then x plus 2. Okay. So first thing we'll do, we'll go ahead and distribute. Yeah, probably not purple, right? So we go 4 times x, that's going to be 4x. Four, 4 times 2 is going to be 8, and that equals y minus 3. Okay, so our last move is we just have to add 3 on both sides to get rid of the 3 over here, right? So then these guys will cancel out, and you get y equals 4x. And then we have 8 plus 3 is 11. Questions? Okay. 
So like I said, this stuff's pretty easy. I mean, I've been going through it kind of fast. So if I'm going too fast, just let me know. All right, so let's talk about a little bit of graphing here. All right. So the first one says, graph a line that is represented by the equation y equals x minus 1. Okay, so when they put it in this format, what you always do is you start with the number. The number is minus 1, so that means we're going to have a point about right there. Okay? Then we look at, from that point, we take and apply the slope. So the slope in this case, if there is no number there, the slope is positive 1, because it's positive 1x. So it means we go up 1 and over 1, draw yourself a second point, connect the dots, and you're good to go. All right. So that's that guy. So we'll color code color coordinate these since we have three of them here. Alright, so let's get another color. Okay, so this one is y equals minus x plus 5. So a minus in front of the x means we have a negative slope or a slope of negative 1. So this one, as you go left to right, will go downhill, where our line in green here is going uphill because the slope was positive. Okay. So again, start with the number. So we'll go up here to 5. So be right there. OK. And then since we have a negative x, that's a negative 1 x. So that means we're going to go down 1, right 1. Here's our next guy. And then we connect our dots here. I know I missed, but you get the idea. All right, so the last one's in a little different format. Okay, so let's talk about how we do this guy. All right, so we can do this one figuring out the intercepts, which is pretty similar to that problem we did before. So the x-intercept is when y equals 0. So if we cross off y, we just get 9x equals negative 18. Divide by 9. And we get x equals minus 2. So at minus 2, we've got a point. And again, you only need two points to make a straight line. So there's one point. All right, so then for the other one, What we'll do is, to figure out the y-intercept, we make x 0. So pretty much you can cross off x. So then we've got 6y equals negative 18. So then we divide by 6. And y is going to be minus 3. So we have another point on the y-axis at minus 3, so that's right about there. Up a little higher, but you get the idea. Okay. And then again, connect the dots. That's it. Questions on those? All right, so this says solve the system of equations. Okay, so there's two ways to do these. There's substitution and elimination. Substitution is good if one of them is already solved for a variable, like y equals, you know, x plus 3 or something like that. Or it's really easy to solve for one of the variables. Okay. This one, not so much. So this is what we would do by what they call elimination. So the key thing about elimination is you can multiply an equation for a line by any number 
and it'll still be the same equation. We'll accept zero, of course, because then there is no equation. But anyway, so we look at this guy here. We've got minus 8x and plus 16x. So we know a little bit about our numbers. We say, well, if I double up 8, I get 16. And if it's negative, then when we add it up, the x's will drop out, and I can figure out what y is. So that's what they mean. We eliminate one of the variables. In this case, it'd probably be pretty easy to eliminate the, uh, the uh, x. So again, like I said, well, it has to be twice as big, so we're going to double up here. All right, so we're going to multiply this guy by 2. All right, so we're just going to distribute. I'm going to write it down here. So 2 times negative 8, that's going to be minus 16x. That's going to be good because when we add up, those are going to cancel out. And then we do 2 times negative 6, that's going to be minus 12y. And then we do 2 times 6, that's going to be positive 12. All right, so we add up term by term. So here we've got 16x, so positive 16x minus 16x, that gives me a zero. That's good. I'm going to have minus 10 minus 12 more, that's going to be minus 22y. And typically we won't write the zero, I'm just making a point. Then we have 10 plus 12, that's 22. Okay, well that works out good, because I divide here by negative 22. These guys cancel out, and I get y equals 22 over 22 is 1, but the second 22 is negative, so it's going to be minus 1. So that's y. Okay. So then we go back. You can plug into either one of these equations. It doesn't matter. I'm probably going to use the second one just because I've got a positive 16x, so I don't have to divide by negative numbers. That's usually where we start making mistakes. So instead of being 16x minus 10y equals 10, this will be 16x and then minus a minus, well, excuse me, minus 10, right? Not bad. Now times a minus 1 equals 10. Okay. So this would be 16x minus 10 minus 1 is plus 10 equals 10. Okay, so this is asking me to take a number, multiply it by 16, add it by 10, and still be 10. Hmm. That sounds suspiciously like a zero. But just to make sure, we can do this. We say, okay, so plus 10 equals 10, right? So subtract 10 here, subtract 10 here. These guys cancel out, but technically these guys cancel out too. But we're going to do 10 minus 10 equals zero. So 16x equals 0, and then we divide by 16. Well, 0 divided by 16 is still 0. So x is 0 in this case. Now, if this is like a multiple choice question, they would probably write these as an ordered pair. So their answer would probably look like this. It would be x equals 0, y equals minus 1, and that would be our guy. Okay. Questions on that one? Cool. All right, let's move on. All right, so here's another one where we're solving the equations. Now, this one, notice that the first equation is already solved for y. So we could probably do the substitution thing. So this is how this works. Let me get fancy here. All right, so we would do 2x and then minus y, but y in this case, instead of calling it y, we're gonna call it minus x minus one. Now we gotta watch our signs on this guy. And that's gonna be equal four, okay? <clears throat> so the minus sign out front is really the same as multiplying by negative 1. Okay, so we're going to have 2x minus 1 times minus 1x will be positive x, and then minus 1 and minus 1 is going to be plus 
1, and that's going to equal 4. So we put these two guys together. So we've got 2x plus 1x, that's going to be 3x plus 1 equals 4. Subtract off the 1, we get 3x equals 3, so that's nice again. Divide both by 3, so x equals 1. Okay, now... On these kind of problems, you're not going to get weird answers. So, I mean, if you do this problem and you get like a fraction or a decimal, that probably means something went wrong, and it's usually a negative sign. So just word to the wise on that one. All right, so now we've got that. We can go back up here. I would use this first equation since it's already solved for y. So this will be y equals minus, and that's going to be 1, and then minus 1 more. So then y would be minus 2. And again, they probably write this as an ordered pair. So then x equals 1, y equals minus 2. That's our guy. So again, sometimes it's easier to do substitution, which we did here. And that's usually when you have something already solved for one of the variables. So this guy was already solved for y, so we were good to go. Okay. Questions on that one? Nope. Okay. Let's do a couple more and we'll call it. All right, so this is graphing an inequality. Now, this works the exact same way, except when we get done, we have to make a couple decisions. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to plot our two points like we always do. All right, so we're going to start with the minus 8, like we always do. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and find a point here at negative 8. So he's right there. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and work with the slope. The slope is positive 3. Alright, so that means from the point we've already drawn, we're going to go up 3, so we go up to negative 5, and over 1, throw ourselves another point. Okay, so there's our two points. So next thing we look at is this guy. So he is less than if it's less than or greater than, our line is going to be a dotted line. The reason it's a dotted line is the points that are actually on the line are not part of the answer. So this will be a dotted line like this. Okay. So then the last thing you ask yourself, you say self, if it's less than, I want the stuff below the line. If it's greater than, I want the stuff above the line. So in this case, it is, in fact, less than. So that would be everything below this line. So all this stuff down here, any points you pick down in this area is going to get the job done. Okay? And that's it. Questions? Let's do one more, we'll call it. No, all right, so we have a function here, 0.45d plus 180 models the amount A in dollars that Terry's company pays him based on round trip distance and miles Terry travels to a job site. All right, so this is pretty standard stuff and they love this stuff on ACT, SAT. Okay, so it says, how much does Terry's pay increase for every mile of travel? So the thing about these guys is they're linear functions, right? 
and a linear function has a number with a slope. The slope is the number in front of D. And then a Y intercept, which is just a regular number. Okay. So they pretty much do the same thing all the time. The Y intercept is some sort of starting point, some kind of initial value, an initial charge of some kind. The example I always use is the plumber charges you $80 just to pull in the driveway. Then he starts fixing your problem. Okay. So it's the same kind of thing here. So first one says, how much does Terry's pay increase for every mile of travel? So for some reason they're using D, for, I guess D for distance. I don't know why they're not using M for miles. So every mile he travels, he gets paid $0.45. So he gets paid 45 cents a mile. Okay. So that's what they're talking about. How much does his pay increase for every mile? Well, it's going to be $0.45. So that'd be 0.45. So that is your slope. Your slope is always how much something is going to change. And his pay is going to change by 0.45 every time he drives a mile. Okay. So next one says, what does the y-intercept represent? So remember, I said y-intercept is a starting point, right? Or an initial value. So before Terry even leaves the office, they say, hey, Terry, just because you're a good guy, and you use your own car for our company business, we're going to pay you $180. Okay. So the $180, like I said, that's an initial value. Or in this case, I'd say it's more of an initial fee. So they're giving Terry $180 before he even pulls out. That's pretty good. I could live with that. I don't know if that's a monthly thing or what that is, but so maybe the you want to be Terry. I'm thinking probably what it is is they probably pay Terry like 180 bucks because he's using his own car. So that would go towards his car payment. That would actually make my car payment. So that's pretty good. <laughs> All right. And that says, well, how much would Terry get paid after 25 miles? So then that means we're just going to take the equation. And we're going to say, well, D is 25. The distance he goes is 25. So it's going to be 0 0.45 and then times 25. And then plus 180. So how much is Terry going to make on a 25 mile trip? All right, so let's get our calculator out. Put him into the bowl here. See, we're having all kinds of fun in Algebra 2 yesterday. All right, so let's clear this out. So we've got... i move this thing up a little bit. Let's see what I need here. Come on. All right, calculator's being a pain. There we go. That's what I needed. All right, so he gets paid 45 cents a mile times 25 miles. And then we're going to tack on that. Nice hundred and eighty dollar bonus. So one ninety one twenty five. Okay. So that's what how much he's gonna get for the twenty five mile trip. Not bad, right? Questions on that? Okay. Well, that's all I got for you. It goes a lot faster when it's just two of us. But we, we did 16 problems today. So that's pretty darn good. I know, right? Kick a button, take a name so we could take a break early. That's the way I see it, right? So again, that's all I got for you. Obviously, I've got your attendance. And uh, we'll pick it up again tomorrow. See ya.